to discuss this summit. Really happy to be joined by Julian Koo, an international law expert and an expert on all things North Korea. Uh, Julian, thank you for joining me at what is really a historic time. As, as this thing begins, what are your what are your concerns for this summit? Well, I think that it's rush, right? So the biggest uh, challenge here is that they didn't spend a lot of time preparing. And, uh, you know, there's perhaps a lot of concerns as to whether both sides are ready to make the kinds of decisions they'd have to make uh, for a meeting of this magnitude. So the danger, Julian, that this summit is rushed, uh, the danger that a lot of this is Trump and his instincts and his gut, uh, what might that danger lead to that's got you really concerned? So I think we see President Trump is very impulsive, right? He uh, takes personal sort of relationships very seriously. So if you could imagine it going one of two ways really badly either way, you could imagine him um, really liking uh, uh, Chairman Kim and really giving away the store or making concessions that are unnecessary or inappropriate or not in the U.S. national interest because he feels like he has a good feeling for the guy. That's one worst case scenario. The other worst case scenario is that he really feels offended as, as, and insulted and goes the other way. <laughs> And it's so insulted that mm -hmm. it causes a conflict of some kind. Has Julian, has Kim already won to some degree by the simple fact that he's able to sit down at a table with the president of the United States? Uh, yes. I mean, I, th this is something that the North Korean leaders have thought for a long time. Uh, so in a sense, yes, he's won something uh, from, from getting the meeting, getting the media coverage, getting the international recognition. Um, and getting, uh, you know, getting legitimacy that he didn't have. I mean, North Korea was, and you know, in a lot of ways still is, a pariah state. This gives them unbelievable global media coverage and legitimacy. So, on the flip side, Julian, the positive, if, if this were to be a positive hour or two long meeting, uh, baby steps, what sorts of baby steps would you like to see coming out of this? So I think my best case scenario, and I think a lot of people have studied this and the model for this is something along the lines of Nixon in China in 1972. Um, China with Mao Zedong was, you know, really bad regime, really uh, terrible leaders in many ways. Um, and yet they're able to reach essentially some sort of agreement that was in the interest of both countries that benefited both the United States. And China, but what they did was they made a general agreement to work toward normalizing relations. But it took seven seven years after that meeting of sort of careful mm -hmm. baby step negotiations. They first they had uh, informal diplomatic ties. They had people to people contacts. The economy started opening up very slowly. I think that would be a useful model for North Korea here. It's not quite the same, but that's along the same lines. I think is the best case scenario. What does, Julian, what does Kim want to get out of this whole summit? So I think the answer is we don't really know because we don't know a lot about North Korea, I mean, compared to what we know about other countries. I think we assume he wants what he's getting, international legitimacy. He's getting um, a reduction. Hopefully he'll, he'll be seeking a reduction in economic sanctions. I mean, North Korea is some, a country that has a lot of people, you know, that uh, the economy, is, it's a very poor country. Uh, he probably would like to have the kind of economic development that he sees in South Korea and in China for his people as well. Um, so I think that's probably what he's looking for. But I think, you know, the, the ideology with Korea is all about, you know, is also very nationalistic. It's about getting this sort of international recognition as an important country, and he's getting that now. And, and Julian, my biggest concern is this issue of denuclearization. We know what it means from the United States perspective, permanent, verifiable, and irreversible. I mean, complete nuclear denuclearization. That can't be at all what North Korea has in mind. Well, I mean, they have agreed in the past to denuclearize. I think the, the sticking point is when they say denuclearization, they mean, sure, they'll get rid of the nuclear weapons if the U.S. leaves, takes all of its troops and military assets out of South Korea. <laughs> and so the definition of that type of denuclearization where they would then hold an enormous military advantage over South Korea is not something the United States and South Korea have ever been interested in. 
So, I mean, I think he, uh, but you know, he doesn't want economic relief from sanctions. He wants to be a normal country in the world. Um, and so I think he might be willing to trade denuclearization or at least partial limits on his nuclear program in order to get that. Hey, Julian, quick answer. Is it a good idea that these two are meeting alone? Uh, you know, someone who I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a little worried about it. Um, you know, we, yeah. we know a lot about President Trump. He's very impulsive. Um, uh, so that is a risk. It's a risky thing to do. Um, but certainly, if you're going to have a meeting between the leaders of two states, it would be helpful at least for some of the time to do that. But it is it is a little risky, and frankly, it's a little scary. We also don't know, for the reason I discussed before, I mean, you know, President, we know President Trump is kind of impulsive sometimes, and he tends to, uh, you know, be very influenced by the person he's meeting with and have, he takes personal relationships very seriously. So you can imagine things going very badly, but maybe he gets, it works out well. They both end up liking each other, and that builds a kind yeah. of trust that is necessary for any political agreement here to work. Great. Julian, I really appreciate it. Julian Koo, everybody. Thank you, Julian, for joining us. Coming up, Trump's go-it-alone foreign policy. I think it's a damn good thing.